I went to my local garden center at my Walmart and I found these terracotta pots. Before we glue these together, we're going to paint them and we're gonna just actually pour this out on our saucer. So our, and always remember thin strokes and thin coats are the best. That way it doesn't sit and it doesn't kind of coagulate and uh, take forever to dry. And it looks like one coat already looks good. So go ahead and paint all of them whatever color you would like, let them dry and then we can move on to the next step. Now it's time to start assembling. So I have some of this jute rope. We're going to remove this and we're gonna secure our legs and our hands with this. We'll start with one end, we'll feed it through and really tie it off good. And for extra security, do a double knot. And then when you pull it through, it's kind of like a bell where it won't fall off and it'll kind of dangle. So now we'll cut a length of the rope. Now we'll just take the rope, I'm just squeezing it tight and we'll feed it through the hole up top. And then do the same process to the other side, create two knots to keep it in place. And now we have the arms. So do the same exact process for the legs. It doesn't really make a difference, it's just however long you want them to dangle down below. So, you know, with this type of project, there's so many different ways to customize it, which makes it much more interesting and more fun. And you can also paint the inside of the pots, but where I'm placing this, you're not gonna see inside of them, so I didn't feel like wasting the paint. And there we have our second set. Now what we can do is we can take the rope and make sure you're purchasing terracotta pots with the holes. At this point in time, you would have already realized if you didn't, we'll take the rope, feed it through, and then we can flip the pot over and this one's not painted inside as well. And then we can just take a twist tie to secure these together. Then we can just pull out the longer legs down below. And these are gonna sit on the edge of my wall, my retaining wall outside. And the arms are just gonna sit on either side. But now it's time to finish up the head with our saucer that's going to be our snout and add some eyes. For the pig's snout, instead of painting it because I am not the best painter, I'm just using a pipe cleaner. So I just cut two little pieces and I think it's gonna actually look like a piggy bank, which will be really cute. So to secure these, we're just gonna add a little bit of hot glue. You could also use some cold glue, add it, and then place it right on the snout. Same thing for the second one, add a little hot glue. And these pipe cleaners will stay put because they're extremely lightweight and hot glue does a great job of holding lightweight products on. With terracotta being both a porous and a heavy product, I do not recommend hot gluing them together. The only time we need to glue is to glue the snout on and glue the head to the body. And I recommend using a cold glue like E6000. Then you can take the snout and just place it right on top. So instead of painting on the eyes, I thought it would be really cute to work in buttons. So we found these black buttons from Walmart. They come in all sizes, shapes, and colors, and styles. So to secure these, you can use cold glue as well. I'm just going to take a little dollop of hot glue and place the eyes right on, like so. And there we go. We have the eyes for our pig. Now it's time to give our piggy some ears. We're gonna use these pink pipe cleaners, which match the paint perfectly. You can find all sorts of pipe cleaners available at nickseasonaldecor.com. We're gonna take five of these and we're just gonna round it out a little bit. Then we're gonna just pinch. And that is what you're gonna see on the outside. Really, really cute. So let's do the same thing to another one and then we can glue them in place. Now it's time to secure these in place. I'm just gonna add a very generous amount of hot glue and this will keep them permanently secured. Of course, the elements can play a huge factor into how long these things will last. Uh, but with these pipe cleaners being on the interior, you could also come back in with an extra saucer and cover this up. Make sure to compress them so that they stay in place. So after adding the cold glue, and I also secured it a little bit to the jute too to keep it in place. Now what we can do is we can take the head and secure it right on top. And look at how cute this looks. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this outside and give you the final reveal of how it looks in my garden. So with the legs being kind of poseable like that, I think it'll look really cute sitting on the edge of my retaining wall. And here is how our piggy turned out. I absolutely love it. And I love how economical and easy he was to put together. So I think it'll be really cute to do these in all different types of barnyard animals. We've already done a cow before, we've done a pig now, and maybe we can do like a chicken and other things. The first thing we're gonna need is a 14 inch grapevine wreath. I decided to go on the smaller scale today to match the scale of our terracotta pots. Of course, the larger wreath, you know, you could use larger pots, but they are quite heavy and we don't want these falling off because it would absolutely break. So we actually picked up nine, three in different sizes. So here we have these taller ones. We also have the mid-size ones right here. 
And of course we have these adorable little tiny ones. Look at how cute these are. So I actually secured a pipe cleaner using some cold glue, let that cure for about 24 hours, and then came back on the surface with some hot glue. Hot glue is not acceptable to secure these. It will peel, uh, so make sure you are using that cold glue. Let it cure for a good 24 hours or so. And the brand I recommend is E6000. This will secure it and keep it from falling off. So once we did that, I did come back in with a steel pick. And I didn't show that on camera. If you don't have a steel pick machine, the pipe cleaner will work just fine. This is what the machine looks like. Um, and you can get them from Amazon, but you know, you don't need that. You can just use the pipe cleaner. So the first thing we got to do is secure these to the wreath. The first thing we're going to do is dip our steel pick into our hot glue. Make sure you are very generous with it. You don't want these things falling off, you know, like ornaments and decorations. If they fall off, you know, it's not a really a big deal, but these, they will absolutely break. So we're going to actually take three of them. We're going to place two up top, make sure that glue solidifies. And if it feels topsy turvy at all, definitely add some more hot glue. Then we're going to take our second one again, apply a generous amount. This is called a glue skillet and we just fill it with uh, typical glue sticks. Take our second one. We're going to place it a little bit lower right about here or so. Now we're going to take our third and final larger one. Once again, dip it and work it down below. So we're going to just come back in with these three. Now these are the mid size ones. Give it a good swirl in your hot glue. Place these inside the grapevine as well. And we're going to come back in with more decorations and moss and flowers to really make this a kind of a garden style wreath. So here's our second. We're going to bring that on this side. And I think this is going to look really, really cool when all is said and done. Now our third and final one. We'll just place this one up top. So that's the large and the uh, medium. Now we're going to come back in with these adorable mini ones, which I just love. And we can place these wherever we would like. So I'm going to take this one and bring it in a little bit. And I think by having them not perfect, I like them to be perfectly straight up and down, but by not having them, you know, exactly laid out the same, we'll just add to the beauty. So we'll take this one and I'm actually going to bring that below the larger pot. And our third and final of the mini we'll place on this side like so. So now we're going to give this a few minutes to harden up and then we can come back in with other decorations. So here we have some of this preserved moss and it comes in little sheets like this. So we're just going to take a bunch of these and place them at random. Another option available to you guys is to actually take these ornaments or well, we're using them as ornaments, but they're terracotta planters or pots and actually make them, you know, rustic or natural. Uh, you can whitewash them, you can make that, you know, you can paint little bits of moss on it and make them look as though they're aged, which I absolutely love. And maybe we'll give that a shot one of these days as well, uh, because I really like the look of aged terracotta as opposed to the fresh. But if you want this fresh look, you don't have to do a single thing, uh, but there are videos out there showing you how to, you know, absolutely turn this into a very vintage looking wreath or naturalized looking wreath. But we're just gonna take a few pieces of this moss, sporadically place it throughout. You can actually stuff these little pots with this moss for that natural look too. And what you can also do is just take your hot glue and place it on your wreath. You can cover your entire wreath with this moss, but I think by just drizzling a little hot glue and placing little pieces, little odds and ends like that uh, will look just fine as well. So what you can also do too is take a little dollop of hot glue Place it actually on your pot. And if you decide you don't like that, you can just peel the hot glue off. Like I said before, it's not for a means of securing them to the, the structure of it, uh, but just to enhance, if it peels off, it peels off. You're not gonna notice it anyway. So again, just take a little bit of hot glue, apply it on your pot, grab a little bit of moss. You don't need much. Drizzle it on top and look at how cute that looks. So now what we're gonna do is spruce it up with a few flowers. So now we have some of these pretty little white flowers and we're just gonna snip off one stem's worth. So this wreath, you can add as much or as little as you would like. And this is also a perfect project for just using your scraps and, and flowers that you only have one or two of uh, from various other projects. In this wreath, you can also work in ribbon, but I think for tonight, I think just working in a few flowers will kind of do the trick. I don't wanna overload this wreath. I kind of like it simple like this. So we'll take some of these leaves that came with it. We can just place them on dip them in our glue skillet. I'll place another leaf up top. 
And notice that this is kind of breaking all of the rules that I've taught you here over the years on Home Talk. So in years past, we often talk about placing things in the same direction uh, for the best look. And this wreath, you know, you don't have to do that. You can just stick things at random and it'll still turn out just as cute. So we'll take one of these. You can actually place them in the pot as well. Look at how cute that is if you wanted to, which I think would look good. So we'll just snip that stem a little bit shorter. Take that flower and place it in. You don't have to add foam to it. You're not gonna, you know, see it that much. It's not gonna be a big concern. We could take another flower. This one, again, we'll trim the stem short. Dip in our glue. And I'll place that one here. All right, so now we have some of these green berries. And I think these are the perfect year-round berry spray. So this would look great in, you know, a garden uh, style patio this would look great on a shed you know this is something you can just leave up year round and not be too concerned with so we'll just snip off a few we don't need too many of these now we can dip these in our hot glue of course feel free to choose whatever flowers you would like but as i've said before always keep scale into consideration so these berries aren't the smallest berries that you're able to find but i think they do the perfect trick of not taking away or deflecting too much from the terracotta pots uh, or the flowers and moss that we've added Place another piece up there. If you wanted to, you can place it in the pot. I'm just gonna take this one and place it to the side. You don't have to actually fill every single pot. I think by just having a few, you know, with things in it is more than enough. And we'll take our final one and tuck it there. So now we're gonna hang this design up and I think it turned out really cool um, for our very first time ever doing something like this. So I can't wait to show you guys the finished product. Okay, everyone, and here's the finished product. And I absolutely love the way this turned out. So different from my norm. And it was really fun kind of giving it a shot. You know, it was something completely outside of my element, but I think it pulled together really, really nicely. So always try different things. You never know how they're gonna turn out until you give it a shot. Sometimes it's an absolute success and you love it. And sometimes it's a total and utter catastrophe, but you never know. And the whole design process is just fun giving things a try. So thank you so much for watching. This is Nick Kretikos of Nick's Seasonal Decor, and you're watching me on Home Talk. Bye, everyone.